Okay, well, I first want to say I'm very excited to be here today, and I want to thank the organizers for creating this event. Uh, my name is Ashley Kaiser. Uh, I'm a graduate student at the University of Michigan and an NDSEG fellow. Post-traumatic stress disorder. For some of us, this word may be personal. It may have affected a friend, a loved one, or even ourselves. What we may not have heard is that this disorder does not affect all people equally. Today, women are almost three times more likely to develop PTSD, regardless of the type of trauma that was experienced. 2016 was the beginning of an exciting and pivotal moment in US history. Women, for the first time, were allowed to serve in direct positions of combat. For the first time in American history, female service members were allowed to serve as fully-fledged members in frontline US military combat units. Now, women make up 15.5% of the US military, and this number is increasing. <coughs> Unfortunately, a large number of women and men that have experienced trauma during their service will go on to develop PTSD. In order to treat and prevent PTSD, we must first understand its underlying causes. But there's a problem. What we know about the causes and mechanisms that play a role in the development of PTSD, which is still very little, has primarily involved research on men, and at the basic research level, has primarily used male animals. Can we trust this research and apply it to women as well, despite the sex difference in PTSD prevalence? The simple answer is no. To live in a world where this gap of prevalence is not present, to live in a world where prevalence of PTSD is near to absent, to live in this world, we must first understand how fear memories are formed, how fear memories are recalled, and how fear memories are mediated via molecular pathways in the brains of men and women. Is it possible that men and women use different brain regions when they remember trauma? Is it possible that men and women rely on different mechanisms within these regions? To unravel these questions has been my goal for the past four years as a graduate student neuroscientist at the University of Michigan and National Defense Science and Engineering graduate fellow. In my studies, I use a mouse model to examine sex differences and how fear is remembered and what the brain is doing in males and females during this process. We know that PTSD can develop after experiencing a traumatic event, such as witnessing the loss of a fellow soldier or almost being terribly injured ourselves. This experience will inevitably cause fear in many of us when we are exposed to similar situations in the future, such as entering a place that resembles where the initial trauma occurred. In fact, those with PTSD may experience this fear and trauma in normally safe situations, which is likely to negatively affect the quality of everyday life. In fact, a primary characteristic of PTSD is generalizing fear from the traumatic event to normally safe environments or situations. Now, in people, it, it fearful face is pretty easy to spot. As it appears, however, these are the facial expressions of mice expressing a variety of different emotions. <laughs> so how do we ask mice if they are afraid, and how do we examine fear memory in mice? I think it's safe to say that I can't judge their facial expressions. So instead, I use a paradigm that delivers a brief foot shock to the mouse that will cause them to instill a fear to the place where the shock occurred. And I'm able to test this fear by placing them back in the environment, and I measure their fear response which in this case is freezing. Now, in people, an intense threat can cause a freeze response. As is the saying, scared stiff. In mice, however, a fear response resembles a crouching posture. Now, I'm able to test if this fear will generalize to similar environments. And to do this, I place them in an environment that has many similar features to where the initial shock occurred, but that also differs in a couple other key elements, such as a different wall shape and a change in lighting. This might resemble a situation where a person has experienced something traumatic and then is later exposed to a similar place or sees a familiar object that was associated with the traumatic event. We wanted to know whether males and females generalize their fear to similar environments. What we observe is quite remarkable. 
Females appear show fear to the similar safe environment, whereas males do not. This is interesting because it appears that males and females may be using different strategies in this situation. You can see here that females are generalizing. Now, generalization can be useful, however, and in, in this case, females may be playing it safe and quickly reacting to environmental threats. In this case, females may be still reacting in, in this case. Now, generalization can be useful and can help to prevent fear and trauma in normally safe situations. Now, could these different strategies play a role in the development of fear-related memory disorders? To get closer to answering this question, we wanted to know what the brains of males and females may be doing when they remember fear. So to examine the brain regions that males and females use when they remember trauma, I quantify cells that express the immediate early gene CFOS. This is a useful marker because it is only expressed when neurons are activated. So we examine levels of neuronal activity in two critical brain regions that play different roles in learning and memory, the hippocampus and the amygdala. The hippocampus is important for the place and space aspects of fear memory, whereas the amygdala is important for the emotional aspects of that memory. Given that these regions are differentially involved in remembering a traumatic event, we wanted to know whether they are differentially involved in males and females when they remember fear. What we observed is quite interesting. Males appear to rely more on the hippocampus when they remember fear, whereas females appear to rely more on the amygdala. This is interesting because it suggests that males and females are relying on different, are, are relying on different regions when they recall the traumatic event. And importantly, it may suggest that they may be remembering different aspects of the experience. And we only published these data a year ago, but other labs are beginning to show the connection between amygdala activation and generalization of fear memories. In another experiment, we wanted to know if males and females were remembering different aspects of the experience and how what they remember may impact how they act in new situations. So to set this up, we use a similar paradigm as before, where mice receive a brief foot shock, except this time the training was more intense. Instead of receiving one training session, they received six. Now, if every single time you entered this room, you received a foot shock, you would be pretty certain that this room predicts shock so certain that you might fail to learn about a new predictor of the shock, say, a sound that is being played. This is called blocking. Learning about new information is blocked because something already strongly predicts danger. So to test if male and female mice block learning new predictors of the shock, we play a sound after they've already been trained to ensure that the environment means danger and I'm able to test this sound in a new environment and measure their fear response to it. What we observe is quite surprising. Males do not learn about the new predictor, the sound, whereas females do learn that the sound predicts the shock. This is interesting because it suggests that males and females may be using different strategies in the aversive situation. Females are still learning about the aversive sound, whereas males are not. This may be another instance where females may be playing it safe and learning about new potential predictors of the shock, even though the environment is already a strong predictor. So here we have it. Males and females appear to be remembering and learning different aspects of the traumatic event and using different strategies in these situations. They also appear to be relying on different brain regions when they remember fear, which may predispose women more than men to develop PTSD. Now, if this information were to translate in humans, we might be able to protect people that are predictably at risk. We might be able to treat and prevent PTSD symptoms in men and women. In order to get closer to this, we need a paradigm shift. For years, research has primarily involved male subjects. And importantly, when females have been introduced and differences have been observed, it has told us nothing other than how females may be different than what is the norm for males. But what are females doing and how is what they are doing beneficial to them? What is the norm for females, for women? To use a common saying, comparing apples to oranges, what do we learn about the apple? We learn that it isn't an orange. 
It isn't the same texture, the same flavor, the same shape, but what is it? All we end up with is knowing that it is different, and knowing that it is different is not enough. In order to know what something is, we need to learn to ask a different question. We need to understand what it is in its own light without comparison. To get closer to answering the question of how women remember fear, our lab is beginning to use an unbiased approach that steps away from what we know to be true in males. We are using an approach called RNA sequencing, which will tell us how gene expression is changed in the hippocampus of female mice when they remember fear. Now, this method does not require us to pre-select what we would like to look for, and thus it avoids a simple comparison that we might make to what we know to already be occurring in males. It will simply tell us how gene expression is changed when they remember. This approach will help to identify the molecular mechanisms that males and females rely on when remembering a fearful event or a traumatic situation. Already, we are beginning to see that the number of genes that are changed when they remember and the functions of these genes are quite different between males and females. If we are able to understand what drives fear memories in men and women, if we are able to understand what mediates these memories, we are one step closer to preventing maladaptive behavior that may lead to the debilitating disorder, PTSD. Thank you.